VBAR offers amazing design options that you can choose from based on what you need. Once you go inside your email, you're going to see the setup stage, your target list stage, which you can target where you're sending the email, and choose the target audience if you have custom segments. And then you have the design stage. Now here you can see default libraries of emails that we've built, pre-assembled email templates. You can choose from any of these based on your preference. You're also going to notice there's a My Templates option. So if you look on top, we have an email templates repository. If you've built your email templates there, you will see them right in here. Then you have a third option for campaigns. So if you have sent in the past a bunch of campaigns, you will have access to every single one of them right in here to recycle and start from an existing email that you've already used, right? So we it lets you re uh, or copy a previous template. If you've built automation sequences, and I mentioned this a couple of times, email newsletters are different than email drips. Uh, they have the same DNA, but email newsletters is a one-time blast, and email with an automation lives on forever if it's turned on, and it's slightly different settings. But we let you access all of your email designs within VBout through these options. And then we have a new design which lets you create very basic text editing process. That's the naked HTML that I mentioned earlier. It looks like it's going on directly from your inbox uh, versus a designed email. If that's the way you want to go, I don't have a problem with it. I personally do like this format. It's a lot less work, very minimal design. And in terms of the template designer, this is where I'm going to be spending the next few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And by the way, we have constant updates to our visual builder. If you have a design that's slightly different, it will prob probably an easier, more um, fine-tuned version of this in one way. Let me introduce you to this uh, view. On the left, you have templates again, which I showed you earlier, but just in case, you can get access to them in here. You have pre-designed blocks. These are blocks that we assembled for you one piece at a time. Maybe you don't want to use a full template, you want to use a block instead. Some of these could be inspired from brands and so on. Top menu, header, CTAs. There's a lot of options you can pick from if you want to build it this way. I always recommend doing, you know, like a top menu first. If you want to do, I don't know, let's just do your logo and center that. And then what I'm going to do is add a footer to the bottom. And we have a lot of different footers in here. Okay, let's just do this one right here. Okay, and between, I need to fill in the blanks. There's a third option to design, which is designing things from scratch based on my preference. So I can put a layout right in between. And then let's say I want to put an image here as a component, you see them right here. Another image, I can put a paragraph below the image and a paragraph here. Very easy. If I forgot a heading, I'm just gonna drag it. I'm always looking for that blue feedback. This is quite sensitive. If I put it outside, you're gonna see that little kind of stop option, like in here, for example. But if I put it anywhere in here, you can see that blue feedback telling me drop here, okay? Another thing worth noting is that you're going to see a black outline around uh, the different group of elements. For example, this is a logo with a black outline. It has its own options on the left. This one is another group of content as a block, and it has its own options. It includes a whole bunch of elements inside. Not only I can control the order of the blocks themselves, I can also control how things are laid out in here. So for example, I can drag this and put it on the left, on the right, or I can make a copy through that little menu right here. And now I'll put it back in here. Very easy. If I'm missing a CTA, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop in um, a button and a button here. <clears throat> and that, that might look good for me if, um, if you want to add additional 
obviously there are a lot of options here for you to play with. Any text edits needs to be done from that top navigation in the blue toolbar. Any design edits, styling, uh, margins, hyperlinking will be done on the left. For example, I can click inside the black area of this button and change the color to make it maybe orange. I can change the border radius and note how you have in here an option to uncheck all sides and maybe just choose left and right and play around with the padding on the left and right. All right. Border colors, note the color here. I can maybe make it a darker orange, middle, all right, that reset. And let's just make a border slightly, maybe two, and make it solid right here. A lot of options here including that plus which hides additional options like the width, height, and every element might include their own styling. I can now copy this, drop it in here, and remove that other button. Hyperlinking is quite simple. I can click inside the element, choose where to anchor it to or link it to. I can link it to an external site. I can create anchors within the same email. All right, anchors could be helpful if you have a very long content uh, piece. I can link it to a VBOT landing page. If you have landing pages here, you can do that. You can link it to a file, which lets you upload your PDFs, pictures, all that cool stuff. So if you have like a downloadable content that's gated, that will come pretty handy. You can also do email hyperlink, which pretty much populates who they're replying to, subject line of that email and the body. And finally, you can hyperlink to a phone. So what, by one click, you trigger the phone dial. Okay, very easy. Now blocks might have their own settings here as well. If I click on here, the left will include some padding, block backgrounds. The block backgrounds for this whole thing, so not the left and the right, but maybe just the middle. So if I change the color to, let's just do light blue and apply, that's how it looked like. Finally, some elements in, are dynamic. For example, I have a countdown element, which I can maybe add right here. And if I click on it, you'll see on the left that settings, which is quite helpful. Maybe the event is the end of the month and apply. Maybe I just drop it right here or below the logo. And I can also click here and change the background color by activating background and choosing the background to be white. Here we go. I highly recommend you play around with this. It all comes down to you know, getting used to the stuff and where the options are laid, laid out. Once you do, you can fly with this. And as I mentioned, we'll be introducing a new builder with a lot more simplified interface, ability to save your design so future uh, styling like the color buttons, padding, and fonts can be easily uh, changed as well. So this is, uh, this is for the visual builder. I'll be talking about personalization in the next module.